What's up everyone, Grant Daddy here. Hope you guys are doing well today. And for this week's video, uh, I wanted to do a, another mapping tutorial. Um, it's called Mapping the Way I Do It. Uh, this is going to be more on the mapping side of things. I know the last one I did was on the scripting side of things. Um, but I've actually wanted to do this video for a while. Um, I just haven't because, uh, to be honest, I don't want to offend anybody. Um, and I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm doing this because I'm trying to, you know, I think I'm the greatest mapper ever. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is because um, here lately, and actually for a long time actually, maps are being released on a daily basis that, um, it, the nicest way to put it is they're not very good, and they're quite boring, and uh, not a lot of thought and not a lot of creativity goes into them, and I think the reason is people just want to be a mapper, and they think that if they put together a map that makes them a mapper, um, and it, you know, I've said it my past videos that yeah when you're first starting out you definitely don't want to take on this huge ginormous map um, and, and really get in over your head but that doesn't mean that you can't take the time to put some creativity and some and some thought and more importantly some detail into the map um, so that's why I'm, I'm decided to make this video and I actually was gonna post this uh, this past week but um, a really good map came out this week and um, it it it's something that I really look for and I get excited about because I don't only just want to play it one time. I want to go back and play it several times. So um, the map is, I don't want to butcher the name, but it, it's Zombie Sump. And uh, the mapper is xjimmy33 and the scripter is Blunt Stuffy. And I actually uh, PM the guys and asked them if I could use the some footage from their map to kind of talk about um, you know, what I'm talking about today. Uh, and they, they said it was cool. So... Um, I want to go ahead and start off and give you guys uh, three particular points that I think about while I'm mapping and I think about while I'm playing other people's maps um, because that it's kind of like a make or break for me um, and these are just three points again that I use so if you know if you got something else that's better or whatever that's totally cool this is just my personal opinion and uh, you know this is what I base my maps around. Um, and I just want to go ahead and go over those with you real quick. Um, you need to have a general idea or theme, obviously, before you start mapping. Um, and you need to stay within that theme. Um, a perfect example, uh, TMG Christmas. Um, you know, part of the Easter egg was you have to go around and collect the Christmas presents. You know, that, that kind of, they go together. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and with Zombie Train, obviously, it's based around my trains. Um, and with fuel, obviously, I'm basing it around that gas station. Um, it really wouldn't make much sense to put something like a Christmas present in, in fuel, or you know what I'm saying. Like it, I guess if you want to try to get creative and whatever, but at some point, it still has to make some kind of sense. You can't just go off the wall and put something in a map that doesn't belong. Uh, at least that's my personal opinion. That would take away from the experience for me. Um, and I don't know if I've said it already, but there's going to be three points I'm going to give you. Um, and the general idea or theme isn't one of them. That's just something that you should already know. Um, but uh, the three points are, and they're in this particular order for me, um, design, detail, customization, slash creativity. Um, so what I mean is if you have a really detailed map that is fully customized, it's got all this cool stuff in it, um, but the design of the map is bad, um, your map's probably not going to be successful because no one's going to want to play it more than once. Um, and vice versa, if you have a really good design and really poor detail, um, again, people aren't going to want to play it more than once because, I mean, it's probably going to be pretty boring. Um, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, and when I say design, I mean actual map layout, like how the map flows, uh, when you open debris, where you go, what you get when you get through that debris. Um, and even uh, a good point in this map is um, they got a really big hill that it just drops down. And it's so awesome because a lot of people don't take the time to mess with the terrain like that. Um, and that's one of the things that this map does really good is the flow of the map, the design of the map is really, really good. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is actually walk you through the map and uh, kind of show you and explain to you what I'm talking about.
All right, guys, before I show you the layout, uh, I do want to give you a heads up. Uh, spoiler alert, I am going to be showing the map in its entirety. So if you haven't played this map, definitely don't watch this part. Um, I'm not going to be giving away any of the Easter eggs, but I am going to show you the whole map uh, layout wise. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, so what you're looking at now, this is the spawn area. Um, and what you'll do is you open up a debris and it takes you down this, uh, this long stretch of path. Um, which I want to point out, when I say design, I'm also including how challenging the map is. Um, so what I mean is this map does a good job at getting you in close quarters, but then giving you a chance to train real quick to get out of a jam. Um, you don't want to have your map you know, open to where the player can train anywhere. Um, there's not much of a challenge, but then vice versa. You don't want to have the map to where the player can't get out of a jam if he needs to. Um, so that's something you'll have to find a balance on, but it's something you need to know and keep in mind. Um, and the other thing this map does good is it flows really good. You'll see here as I go down the path, um, it circles back around. And then I have choices to where I can go back through that loop or go back to the spawn area. Um, that's very important um, as far as flow. You always want to make sure the player has several options or paths to choose. Don't make them go down a hallway and get stuck and has to have to come back down that hallway. Um, sometimes you can do that, but majority of the time it's best to give the player different options and different paths to choose. Um, this is what I was talking about. I think I mentioned it earlier. This hill here, uh, this drop-off is fantastic. Um, it's really creative, and I think anyone who plays this map, the one thing they'll remember and take away from it um, is that hill. Uh, and that's very important because, um, to me, that... That makes the game that much more fun and makes me want to go back and play it again. Um, I, I think they did a really good job uh, with the overall landscaping. So as far as layout and design, that was it, guys. Uh, it wasn't too complex, uh, but it is actually pretty simple, which for me, that, that's really cool. Um, and that's what I look for. It's simple and fun, yet it's challenging. So as far as layout, that's some, those are some things that you, uh, you just want to keep in mind and consider. All right, guys, so my next point after design is detail. Um, and one of the things I want to start off uh, saying on this point is people will be able to tell how much time and effort you put into your map on the detail side of things. Uh, what I mean is if you just kind of skip over it and just throw in some stuff here and there, uh, people it will show and people will be able to tell uh, and vice versa like in this case you can really tell some thought um, and some effort and time was put into detailing this map out um, and you don't have to go all crazy um, you know this map is, is a really good example um, if you look at the outside of the map a lot of it's just fog uh, with trees um, but there are little things going on you, you go under a bridge um, and there's different things going on outside of the map um, but more importantly inside of the map is where you can tell the focus was um, and I mean even down to the smallest detail of board placement um, you can really tell that some time and some thought was put into uh, the landscape um, when you go down that hill there's different textures and different things going on there that you know you run through and you play and you don't really notice it but at the same time you do notice it because um, it's one of the things that makes you feel like you're there, and it makes the atmosphere feel real. Um, you know, I, I hate when I get in a map and, you know, I, I, I kneel down and I see a board just floating, not touching anything. And I know I understand that happens from time to time, but um, some of the maps, uh, you can really tell that, you know, some of the maps have been released. Um, you can really tell that uh, not a lot of time and not a lot of focus was put to detail and that's frustrating to me because I, I have actually stopped uh, playing maps when they're released I wait to get other people's responses because uh, I'm so tired of the mundane uh, let's throw a map together um, let's put it in a box and let's upload it and say we're a mapper um, you know I understand you have to, it's a process you have to get better and you'll get better as you do it but um, that doesn't mean that you can't put towards the you can't put forth the effort to make the map uh, look the best that it should or the best that it can. So, uh, you know that's one of the things I'm talking about with detail is just taking the time to make the atmosphere and the environment feel real. And one of the things that I try to do uh, when I'm you know detailing out my map is uh, I try to get inspiration from different areas. Uh, you know, play a game that that you enjoy. 
um, and actually take time to go through and look at all the detail that was put into it. Don't just run through the map or run through the game. Um, one of the, the games that I use is The Last of Us. Uh, that's probably why it's my one of my all-time favorite games is uh, the detail in that game is just outstanding. Um, and I actually go through, when I play it, I don't want to take the time to set up my um, capture uh, my capture card, I'll actually take my phone and I'll just take pictures of different areas that I really like. Just random buildings and random scenes outside of the map um, that I like. And that inspires me and gives me different ideas. You know, like I told you in Fuel, uh, that one building, it's not the exact design that's in The Last of Us, but when I made that building, uh, it was based off a picture I took from that game. So if you're having trouble getting inspired uh, to detail uh, I definitely recommend going through and playing your favorite games and just taking time not to rush through the game and beat it, but just to look at the atmosphere and the detail. Uh, and that's one of the things that will help you out. All right, guys, the last point I have for you is customization and creativity. Uh, I combined those two together because I wanted to make sure you understood when I said creativity, um, I'm not talking about the creative map layout uh, or design. Um, that would actually be considered design and layout um, when I'm talking about creativity I'm talking about the custom features that uh, people focus on to put in their maps um, and that's a really good thing to have but I feel like so many people spend so much time and effort trying to come up with the next big idea uh, to put in their map that they actually don't focus on design and detail um, and to be honest with you uh, you can have the greatest newest coolest feature in your map but if your map isn't fun to play uh, and it doesn't look uh, appealing, um, a lot of people probably won't enjoy it. Um, pro a lot of people probably won't enjoy your new feature as much um, as if they would have if it was in a good map. That makes sense. So uh, when I'm talking about customization and creativity, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not going to show you any of the custom stuff that this map has. I don't want to give any of that away. So you'll have to actually play the map to see it. Uh, I will tell you there's a really cool ending. Um, it's different. Um, and if you've played uh, Zombie Train or The Shack, uh, you'll know that I try to make the endings different. I try to give the player a different experience so it's not the same mundane map where you, you know, you reach the end game trigger and you press it and it says, hey, you know, congratulations, game over. Uh, I try to do something different with each map and that's what I'm focusing on with Fuel is to kind of give uh, a different unique ending that you haven't seen before. Um, and actually, this map really, you know, I, I didn't know the ending. I, I don't, you know, watch videos to, to find out the end when I play a map. I'll actually play the map all the way through myself. Uh, and this ending caught me by surprise, and I was really pleased with it. Um, and to be honest with you, I've played it twice already, and I'm going to go back and play it a third time probably. So uh, that's one of the things that, you know, keeps people coming back, um, you know, is, is the creativity that you put into your map. Um, but like I stated before, uh, you really want to focus on the design and layout first and then the, the way the map looks second, which is the detail, and then the customization and creativity. All right, guys, so those are the three points. Uh, design, the map layout, how the map flows, how the map plays. Uh, then detail, how the map looks. Um, is it appealing? Does everything look realistic? Does it feel like you're actually there playing? Um, and the last one is customization and creativity. Um, and I understand that, you know, as you map, you'll get better. Um, the one thing I want to challenge you guys is to find a good balance. Um, again, don't focus so much on detail that the map has no design, or yeah, it has no design and no layout. Uh, that's kind of what, that's kind of the whole point behind the video is just to find a good balance uh, to make your map uh, fun challenging and uh, replayable um, so and again these are just my points and my opinions so you know I, I hope you guys appreciate uh, me sharing this with you I, I don't want to come off like I know all in mapping because I don't um, these are just things that that I focus on when I map and things I look for um, in other people's maps um, so you know as you do it you'll get better uh, so don't stress on making the very perfect map just make it fun for you and make it challenging and um you know as long as you put effort and time into your work people will tell uh, so if you take nothing else away from this video take that uh if if you put your effort 
and your time into the map in all of these areas, people will be able to tell, um, and you would definitely get more positive feedback than if you just threw the map together and threw, you know, uploaded it so you could consider yourself a mapper. Um, but that's going to be it for me. One more point before I, I leave here is always make sure to test your map. Test your map with several different people. Um, and if you need someone to trust, you don't want to give away any of your ideas, I promise you if you need some help testing your map and you want an honest opinion, uh, just message me. I'll test your map. Um, I know what it feels like to have an idea stolen, so I promise you I won't give away any of your creative ideas. I won't steal them. Um, so if you don't have anyone else that you can trust to help you test your map, um, I give you my word. You can trust me. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that, guys. Thank you so much for the likes, comments, and subscriptions. And as always, I'll see you soon.